So I just generally come from a very celestial, scientific, atmospheric perspective with my work. Some of the paintings relate directly to solar flares and some of them still in, in, imply um, subatomic physics and, uh, and, and the celestial and geology and uh, weather patterns and all kinds of things that I'm kind of taking in. Um, so a lot of the ways that these pieces were conceived was through a printmaking process that I've developed by making uh, collagraphs with wax. So I use, uh, I use the wax on a plexiglass panel. And for this one, this is the first large format one I did. And so what I did was I just uh, had the collagraph, made that, and then went to a studio and, and put the ink on it. And I used water-based inks. And, um, and then I made prints of all four of these with a background color. And then I mounted them onto the panel, tiled them together in the composition. And then um, from there, I layered wax, uh, several layers of wax and integrated oil paint and different, uh, basically just imparted the same texture that was on the plate on top of the painting. So I really like kind of going back and forth between uh, you know, playing with the materials really. Like I, I do a lot of encaustic, but but I'm also an oil painter, so I really like to challenge myself with with um, combining the materials and really building layers and 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 having it uh, kind of show me some things. I like my materials to show me where to go. This show pretty much represents a convergence of everything I've ever been interested in as an artist. Um, geology, weather, the celestial, science, physics, space, astronomy, it's all here. And that's pretty much what I've focused all my attention on and it's kind of come together in this very symbiotic way this time. These, and this one too, this one too is, is kind of a solar flare here. I mixed up a white that was like um, the kind of white you see in old photos. I was like really specifically wanting to go for this crazy off-white color. And I did the whole painting off-white first. And then I did a few layers of black. And then I carved this shape out of it. And then everything kind of came in after that. Um, and as a result, this, you know, if I were to take this panel apart and put this panel on a press with ink on it, it would make a print. But I kind of decided to use the approach in a different way and really turn my paintings into, uh, like it's almost like a collagraph, but it's a painting, and I'm painting on top of it directly. This is how these started. And I did a series of 15 of these, and I have nine in this show. And I mounted the print on the panel, and then I just worked it up with different colors, color pencils, re reworked it to the point where I wanted it. And then I did several layers of clear wax on top and created more of an edge. And that's, they all came out really different from each other. Sometimes I'll take one plate and then do another print of another plate on top, like with this one. It's this plate, but then there's another plate on top with a different color, a different composition, and more layering of line, which I seem to be very preoccupied with uh, line. I started around the fall. I have more of a connection with this sort of uh, gestural uh, kind of uh, Sanskrit I'm doing, or whatever it is, this, uh, you know, these symbols. And so I started reading the Dictionary of Symbols. And, uh, and when I was reading it, I found that I was most attracted to symbols of ancient meteorology, alchemy, astronomy, and weather, anything really. And I was just like, wow, isn't this, it's just, I can't get away from it. It's just, I'm just attracted to these types of um, themes. And so I took some of those alchemic symbols and some of the meteorological uh, Greek symbols and I combine them in this. And when I'm doing it, I have to be fairly fast and I can't really think about it too much. I can't really say, okay, I'm going to make this symbol now. You know, like I, I just have to go through it like I'm writing a letter 
almost, and I have to go very fast and not think about it because I think that uh, with making art for me, and I think a lot of artists can attest to this, um, I think you can't really think about it too much. There are too many distractions in our world. It's really important that you just kind of let loose and you just go, all right, you know, if this doesn't work out, I could just move it off of here. It doesn't, I could just turn it into something else. And so I'm always open to turning things into something else if they don't work out. But, but the thing with me and, and in life in general, I'm just kind of a major risk taker. So with my art, I just really go out on a limb because it's like, I mean, what's the worst that could happen? I'm using um, a wax pen, which is like a batiking pen, and you put wax in it and you draw with it. And, um, and it's also a lot less uh, strenuous on me physically. I'm starting to develop a really bad case of tendonitis in my wrists from the labor involved with using encaustic the way I use it. Um, I tend to scrape a lot and, and I use a very tiny tool and Dan, my partner, tried to devise all kinds of different tools for me so that I, <laughs> I wouldn't be in so much pain. But then I just started developing this whole other way of working. Uh, with the, the building of texture here and the incising of lines, but not filling them with wax, but paint instead, using oil paint. And just getting back to the paint, not so much the wax. I like the wax as a material, but I also like oil paint quite a bit, and I love the way oil paint absorbs into wax. And so while they're encaustic, they're also very much oil, uh, very much. That one, I really, my only focus was to just let's make it so that it's similar in texture and composition and color to that one. I almost wanted it to be kind of a detail of that and it just became something else and then of course I'm listening to the news and the whole oil spill and I think just some of the color and some of the things just sort of evoke that for me but I didn't really want to go there in my titling or my, my thinking about it. But that, that was kind of how that came about was all of that stuff was happening and it started feeling like this really explosive central image. Um, and then the one on the far end is so much more oil painting than it is encaustic. Um, it's just got a base of uh, white um, or, um, encaustic like a collagraph, but then it's just got tons and tons of oil paint on it that's scraped off and put back on and, and, and just this whole process of, of removal I do with my work. So this one is also a series of collagraphs that I, that I did. They're actually monotypes that were made from encaustic collagraph. And I mounted them all together and then uh, reworked it with paint underneath and then did several layers of clear on top. And then I superimposed the image of the, of the solar flare by drawing, hand drawing a stencil. Um, and I, I hand drew the stencil on a piece of paper and then I put it on here and then mixed the, just the right color of orange. I like really struggled with that for a few days. And then I got, I got into the kind of the, um, the metallics a lot more. Um, I wanted them kind of to feel like they were unearthed from some other place and so that's kind of my always in the back of my head and that's my main objective with my work is that it was dug up from somewhere. It's a remnant or some kind of eroded object. Thank you all so much for coming. Thank my partner Dan who framed the entire show and he's just the most phenomenally supportive human being on the face of the yeah. earth as far as <laughs> helping me, um, helping my career so much. So, cheers. Thank you all.